So installations, you have Heathrow Terminal 5? Yeah, we have Heathrow. Well, actually, we have. We started with Heathrow some two years ago uh, to uh, equip some 900 to 1,000 locks in Terminal 1 to 4. And wh why do I tell this? Why I'm so proud on telling this? Sometimes winning a tender, you win a tender, but then you have convinced somebody with a tender and somebody decides to go with you. What for me is so important that BAA, British Airport Authorities, the, the owners of, of Heathrow, had already an experience on 1,000 doors with Heathrow before they took the decision to use Salto as their access control supplier on all the, let's say, non-connected or non-wired doors, thousands of them in Terminal 5. That really demonstrates that the, that the initial experience was what they expected right. of, of the product. <clears throat> and so, so that is why, why, why Heathrow is such a, a big success for us. But I mean, 600,000 doors in, in about eight years uh, means that we have a lot of large installations. So yes, we have uh, places like, uh, we have several parliaments in, in Europe, uh, being the, the French parliament, the, the largest one where we now have two and a half thousand doors running. Um, we have large universities uh, in the UK, several ones, uh, even on technologies like iClass, HID iClass, like Brunel University, where in the first phase we did two thousand doors in one hit. Uh, but we even have larger installations. And no, I don't have to go back years, okay? So last year we did two large universities in the Middle East. One we're extremely proud of is the American University in Cairo, in Egypt, okay, where we have 2,000 doors, 1,500 of the escutcheons, so the, the, the standalone access control, but 500 online points, so hardwired online point, all from Salto. And then a little bit later, so we're in still, still installing it now, is the UAE, the Emirates uh, in, in Dubai, UAE University with more than 4,000 doors in one order. Those are very large installations for people to take a decision to go with a company like mm -hmm. Salto, which I think it tells a lot about where the company has come from and at what stage, what sort of projects we are able to deal with. So how would you define electronic access control? Because it's, it's a pretty broad term. It is. It is. And uh, let, let me see if I can give you a short answer because it's not easy. But let me start to say with that when we started, when we started, when we were setting up our distribution networks, uh, we had great difficulty of convincing the system integrators to work with our system because people took our type of access control as, oh, yeah, I know this. This is a hotel lock. This is, this is for, 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 hotel lock, for hotel doors. However, the problem with these locks, people said, people told us, was no, but if you, if you start putting them on large projects, then you still have to walk the building uh, in order to make any adaptions to the locking plan, to eliminate keys, to add new users, stuff like that. Um, of course, with the data on card system that Salto invented, we will come back to that a little bit later, uh, things have gradually started to change. And we have demonstrated to people that electronic locking is actually a perfect complement of the access control product, of the access control solution. What happened until now was building an access control was only affordable on a very low percentage of doors. You had the wiring, you had the product itself, and very easily each access control door was costing you thousands of dollars. Okay, so, so basically all the buildings decided to put it on a few of the perimeter doors and some of the high security doors on the inside and that was it. And all the other doors were still resolved with mechanical key systems. Problem with mechanical key system, not going into the security itself, is it is a problem when you have to maintain the security. If people lose keys, uh, people make copies of keys. How do you keep track of all that? So, yes, you can keep the bad guys out, maybe, by, by spending a lot of money on the, on the outer shell. But how do you make sure that people within the building are where they should be and are not going in indoors where they cannot be? Or during the day until 5 o'clock, maybe I can be in this room. But after 5 o'clock, when the social control is gone, maybe I can't be in this room anymore because then I'm alone in this building or only a few people left. So 
that was really a, a change that took place gradually. So where do I think we're going now? To go back to your question, I think that we're going to a point where there's going to be a point of convergence. Okay, so the system integrators and actually the large access control people, companies, are not looking away anymore when you talk about electronic locking. Okay, they see that the end users see a place for both of them. Yes, there are doors that the security managers and the IT managers want to be hardwired now and for many years to come. They want, to, want them to be completely hard, hardwired with all the information and all the possibility that that gives them on those doors. But they want hundreds and thousands of other doors that until now were secured by mechanical keys to give them much more security, to give them much more control and flexibility. And there is where electronic locking comes in. So the convergence where in graphical user interfaces we have already started. I mean, in the last few weeks, there have been press releases where Salto has integrated with some of these large access control companies in order to deal from one graphical user interface with the traditional access control part and also deal from that same graphical user interface with the electronic locks. I think that that is where uh, this whole thing is going. It's also management control. Oh, absolutely. And it's options that you don't have with mechanical locking systems. And it's also, which you sort of touched upon, it's administration from the inside on the maintenance required to upkeep or maintain your locks. And that becomes a lot easier in an in a electronic environment. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you, just, you just tell me, Mark, how a mechanical key can become part of an identity management system. Okay, so this, this thing can become part of an identity management system where at the end of the day you manage the identity of a person uh, which is basically placed on a secure card and it allows you to have access to certain computers, to go into certain areas, to identify you at multiple places, uh, but it also tells me that I can open up doors that are not hardwired, that I can open my locker lock to take out, uh, out my, my sport gear if I want to go running in the afternoon, stuff like that. A mechanical key system has all those limitations. It, 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 it just is it, it is just coming to the limit of where it can go, whereas now the electronic locking is taking over, and it is, it, it, it's, it's really coming together. Yeah, one, I mean, one of the issues in mechanical keys, for example, is the work we've done with the simulation, unauthorized simulation, duplication, and replication of keys, and how we've been able to take that piece of plastic that you have in your hand for your credentials and turn that into a key for a mechanical lock. <laughs> it just to be very graphic just imagine. about it. <laughs> try to, a, try to do that the other way around. That's correct. That, well, it isn't that it hasn't been done. It depends on the protocol that you're using in that card. Yeah. But the fact is, when we can take a piece of plastic from that credit card, which is thirty thousandths of an inch thick, that happens to bypass most keyways, even proprietary restricted keyways, and make keys to go through a facility where you believed you had security, that's a serious problem and that is being dealt with in electronic access control exactly. systems. So, uh, uh, and the convergence of computers to control everything uh, is forcing the integration of electronic access that's, systems. That's exactly where I wanted to go, yeah. Um, if, if you read, uh, we talked about this earlier, Ross Anderson's book from Cambridge, uh, Security Engineering, uh, which I would highly recommend to all of our viewers and everybody involved in this industry, this integration is really here, and it's not just in security. It's in, in people management, as you say, in, in identification, and it's also in environmental controls. And so it's, it all has to come together. And the, the mechanical locks for many applications are really going to be a thing of the past. Not for all, but for some. Um, so, candidates for electronic access control, who are they? You mean? You've mentioned many of your customer groups. Yeah. But how low does this go? I mean, is it a homeowner? Is it a small office? Who should look at implementing electronic access control and who should 
frankly, stay with mechanical locks. Mark, I, I think that is that question is it's of course in the mind of a lot of us in this industry. Um, so how far will it will will it go? So yes, of course, it started all at corporate level, large universities that already had taken decisions to go into to, to spend money on, on credentials, airports and stuff like that. Um, however, we have seen a growing interest um, in, 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 in s first in smaller corporate places, smaller industries, uh, small hospitals or doctors practice or st stuff like that. And I think the fact that Salto has just recently launched a system which we call our scalable electronic locking system, which is the same electronic lock where we deal with the high-end data on card system that is used at Heathrow Airport, can go as low as what we call, you can also do a self-programmable. You can buy cards where you can use, you can just you program the cards into the lock and have then shadow cards to delete those cards that you have lost, okay? So in order to address other segments of the business, so tr that translated to the type of routes to market, yes, we we work with system integrators. Yes, in the UK we work with uh, architecture ironmongers and security specialists, or in Germany, uh, Sicherheitsgeschäfte, the security companies, but also the locksmith business. For instance, in Scandinavia, where the locksmith business is extremely developed, where the locksmith, f faster than maybe in other places in Europe, had picked, on, uh, picked up this train on we don't want to just stick on making a copy of a key. Let's move with what, what the business is, is doing. There, that is an extremely important trade channel for our electronic locks. And I'm, I'm saying here, thousands of them are going through the locksmith's channel. Um, in the UK, locksmiths until now has been only a very small part of our business. Now it is starting to grow. So you've seen the adaptations of our product, but also the interest from the, mar from the market, I would say, I don't know anymore. Before, I always said, residential, forget it. Residential, people won't, won't, right. won't, won't use it. But think about the following residential. Maybe a single, a single house, okay? Maybe you have difficulties finding why would somebody want to be flexible. It is just the family, it's father, mother, children, whatever, okay? However, think about an apartment building with a lot of common doors where if you use the if if if, if the owner of, of of apartment 3 loses the key you should theoretically change or repin or change the keys of everybody because that key if that key is somewhere lost it can open also the common doors and and stuff like that their electronic locking starts to become extremely interesting and say we have an electronic lock that is managed by the building manager for all the common doors where is and that in salto that is possible where is on your own door that same card that is loaded into a software where you can deal with the common doors is a self-programmable unit on your own door so the building manager downstairs cannot make a MasterCard that opens up my door. Yeah. So, I mean, so where does, it, where does it start? Where does it end? I don't know anymore. Before I did, I don't know anymore. That's very, you raised a very interesting point because apartment